God, praise Him. Amen. 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 We just truly thank God, Amen, for everything that He's doing, everything that He has done. Amen. Amen. Take me back, Amen, to the place where I first believed. Take me back, Amen, to that place where I was pure in You, God. Oh, we thank God for that, Amen. Amen. Normally, I give Sister Alice, Amen, a heads up on my sermon title to give her an opportunity to pick some songs that go along with what I'm preaching. But today, but this week, I was late. But God still was on time. Amen. Yeah. 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 That song does not go with what I'm preaching. Amen. Yeah. You'll see it in a minute. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You'll see it in a minute. Amen. Yeah. Truly, yeah. God is good. And we truly give a glory and honor for everything He is doing. Amen. I believe that there is a word for the house today. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We're going to be preaching from, from the first chapter of the book of Genesis. Um, we're going to be dealing with learning about the verses 26 and 30 through 31. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we expect God to do something great in this place. Mm -hmm. I knew he would do something good because the mic messing with him, the mic falling mm -hmm. down, other mic not up. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. But it's going to work in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's going to work in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for you right now. Thank you, God, for all that you do, God. Thank you, God, that you're mighty and you're wonderful in our lives, right, God. And we're looking for you expectantly, God. God, we are especially looking for you today in the proclamation of your word. It's preaching time. And God, I thank you for the anointing that makes preaching easy. I thank you, God, for the anointing that makes hearing your word easy. I thank you for the anointing that makes doing your word real easy. Thank you, God. God, and for, for giving us that type of anointing that bring a word from on high. And while you're partnering with us in the power of your anointing, God, we pray that you cover us with the covering of your covenant, God. Yeah. Cover us with the precious blood of Jesus, that the devil might know who's we are and who not to mess with. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 Today, for our time together in the Word, amen, in worship, amen, and in celebration of the mighty God we serve on this last Sunday of 2013. Now, I just want to take some time and encourage you in the Lord, amen, with this sermonic offering, amen, that is entitled, Tis Your Season, amen. Now, I know that in this time of year, amen, it is very common to hear the phrase, Tis the season, amen. And some of you might be saying, well, Pastor, while this is a clever play on words, what does that really mean? Well, you know I'm so glad you asked. The phrase, tis the season, literally means it is the time, amen. It is the time as it relates to Christ's birth, Christmas time, and the new beginnings that go along with the brand new year, amen. Amen. Now, I know some of you may be saying to yourself, then, this season ought to be about, ought to solely be about Jesus. Amen. So why are you saying, tis your season? Amen. Now, for real, y'all, I'm really not trying to upset your theology, your Christology, or your ideology. Amen. But I do want to spiritually broaden your way of thinking. Amen. So let me explain just a little bit further. We have just spent the last month, uh, amen, taking a closer look uh, at what the coming of Christ at the Advent season uh, brings to mankind. Amen. We have found out that the, that our God is a God of hope. Amen. He is the God of peace and joy and love. And because the Bible tells us in Hebrews uh, chapter 1 verse 3 that Jesus is the express image of God, uh, this means that if God is hope, peace, joy, and love, then, well, Jesus is also hope, peace, joy, and love, too. Amen. And we have learned that it was the desire of God to share these characteristics with mankind again. And he did, amen, through his son, as Jesus delivered those character traits of God to a mankind in the season of Advent. Now, I know someone out there must be thinking, whoa, 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 Pastor, you just said again. Isn't it true, Pastor, didn't you teach us that in the first Advent of his coming, aren't we celebrating what Christ brought to us at that first time, amen, as a babe in the manger, amen, hope, peace, joy, and love? Well, yes, he did, but can I explain just a little bit? Bit Can I tell you today that the Advent 
season is about the restoration of man unto his rightful place with God. Man's original place. I told y'all, take me back what's going to fit. Amen. Man's original place with God. The place that we enjoyed in the beginning in the garden of Eden. Amen. Amen. And let me show you this. Amen. Just what I'm talking about. Let me show you. Amen. In the biblical account of the creation. For six days, God created each day. And each day represented a, a special time or a season. Amen. Um, that day's creation had dominance in the earth until the next day's creation was brought to, into being. Amen. And then that day enjoyed a season of power. Amen. Building on the previous day. If you don't believe me, go... Go with me back to Genesis 1 and we'll take a look. On day 1, God created light. Amen. Notice I said light. He did not make the sun that day. But he created light. Amen. And he brought order to the earth. And it was the light that was in his power. It was a season of light. On day 2, God created and divided the heavens and the atmosphere. Amen. The earth. Amen. Amen. And it was the atmosphere and the heavens season of dominance. Amen. On day Day three, God divided the waters from the land and he created vegetation on the earth. It was the vegetation, amen, and the waters placed a time of dominance. Then on day four, God created the sun and the moon and he created the sun to rule over the day and the moon to rule over the night, amen. And it was their season of dominance, amen. Then on day five, God called the waters to produce creatures and all and be full of living things. Scientists, scientists have taught us and sometimes Christians try to get away from it and try to deny it, but it's right there in the word. God said from the waters be fruitful. Come on, come forth, let it be full, let it be an abundant. Scientists taught us uh, that there was a time when life forms, uh, the creeping thing, the moving thing, the swimming thing, even the fowls of the air came out of the water. Amen. But then, look, God said it was all right. Don't, don't be afraid of science. God said it was all right. Because I have let the water have its season. Amen. Look, uh, and in the midst of the water having its season, that came another day. It was called the sixth day. And on the sixth day, God created cattle and creeping things all on the earth. Uh, let me tell you, each day was a season of itself. Amen. Uh, it was in the creation, amen. It had to lead role, amen, and a place on the earth. And after each day, God began to call forth a blessing upon the day. That's how you know you're in your season. But God began to call forth a blessing over your day, amen, over your time. And every day, God called forth a blessing because he pronounced it to be good. Each day was succeeded, amen, in creation by a brand new day. That was created to rule in that season. But can I tell you what began to happen in the latter day, the latter part of the sixth day? Because <clears throat> this is where our preaching text picks up. It said that God decided to create a man in his own image and the likeness of God. And look, can I tell you right there? Thus begins, amen, the season of man in the Garden of Eden. Right then and there, when God said, after all the other days had gone down, God said, let there be a man made in my image. God began to ordain the season of man. Well, look, I'm going to try to teach you something in a minute. You're going to catch it. Let's get the background right now. When I tell you that Jesus it is your season. It is your season. It's some background in the in the word that this day belongs to you. Come on. Somebody just give me go ahead and shout my face right there. That is background in the word that this day does belong to you. Now let me tell you this. See, earlier, amen, we have said and we have defined season to literally, to literally mean time. Amen. But what mankind enjoyed in Eden uh, this season uh, was more than just a natural uh, expanse of time. Uh, oh, can I tell you, it was a spiritual experience. Come on. Uh, it was a spiritual thing. Uh, see, spiritually, mm -hmm, uh, season means uh, an anointed 
time or period, uh, uh, sanctioned by God, uh, where the divine empowerment of God uh, or the blessing uh, is causing everything uh, to work for you in your favor. Amen. Come on. Amen. That's the seed. Uh, this is what we enjoyed in Eden. Uh, we began to enjoy the, our season. Uh, somebody just say it with Pastor. Cheers to your season. Come on. Now. See, look at the text. Amen. And, uh, in this season, uh, this God ordained, God appointed, God authorized uh, period of time uh, and even uh, God proclaimed uh, that not only do we look like him, uh, but we have power like him too. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Amen. The Lord granted us, amen, uh, in this season, uh, he granted us dominion over the fish of the sea, uh, yeah. over the fowl of the air, uh, oh, over the cattle, uh, and all the earth, uh, and over every creeping thing in there. I don't care what came out of the sea, uh, when God made man, man was in charge of it. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes don't tell you that part. Amen. Well, let me break it down for you. Amen. See, in this season, uh, mankind was commanded uh, to walk on, uh, to walk and be in prosperity and abundance. Uh, God said, be fruitful and multiply. Uh, he said, uh, replenish the earth. Uh, there shall be no lack. Amen. Uh, there shall be no lack, uh, no brokenness uh, in any area of your life. Uh, in our text in verse 28, uh, God is saying that God blessed them. God shared the anointing with man in this season to be fruitful and to multiply, to replenish the earth, to take control of the earth and call it to work all together for his good. Somebody know the scripture in Romans 8 and 28. For all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Can I tell you what God's purpose is for you? God's purpose is for you. It's your season. Amen. That's God's purpose for you. That's why he called you. That's why he set in order from the beginning. In the book of Genesis, it is, it was your season. Amen. Look, look, look. I think God said it again to man. If you look at the text, amen, it'll say it right there. He said it again to have dominion. Yes. See, God has said to mankind in this season, I have given you everything that you need to succeed. Somebody need to get that. If you do like the choir said, and allow the Lord to take you back, amen, amen, amen you'll find in the back. Amen. All the way back there, uh, that it was ordained from God. Uh, it was spoken out of His mouth, uh, in His head, uh, and it moved forward in the Holy Ghost. Uh, that you should be in season. Uh, y'all, uh, y'all fashionistas out there, uh, y'all know the stuff is out of season. Uh, and some of y'all got no nerve, uh, Amen. To look at some folk uh, that's wearing some stuff that's out of season, uh, and you begin to recognize it. Those of y'all that are fashionista. If you don't know what the word means, you ain't one. Eh? <laughs> but for those of you fashionistas out there, the, you know when something was last year, two years ago, or even ten years ago. The, you know when something's so old, it'll come back in the style. Amen. Amen. You know, amen. And, the, and you can speak on it. Uh, and how much more so, uh, amen, should it be for the child of God? Uh, you got to understand that what the God uh, that you love outfit you in, uh, it really don't never go out of season. Uh, God outfit you with hope, love, and joy. Uh, God outfit you with faith and power and deliverance. Uh, God outfit you with, uh, with anointing and power. Uh, can I tell you uh, that your stuff uh, don't never go out of style, right? Understand, amen, that in the midst of this mandated season, amen, in the midst of this mandated season, is it up, is it up there? It is, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In the midst of this mandated season, it is for you, amen. Amen. God is saying to you, your season, amen. Can I tell you, in the creation, amen, the season of mankind had no end in the season of Eden. See, this is shown by the fact I'm going to let you know how I know her. Because after uh, the creation of man, uh, after God ordained his season, amen, uh, there was nothing else made. Mm -hmm. 
nothing else. After every other season, God made something else. But when he made man, he didn't make nothing else. He just told man to take your season, be fruitful in it, and multiply. He told man to produce after your own kind. So look, see, what it was meant to be, y'all, is that from Adam and Eve, it was to, it was to, it was to come a whole bunch of seasonal folk. Amen. Folk that were in vogue. Folk that were in season. Folk that were never going to go out of style. It was supposed to be. Amen. God I said, I'm done. But you know, on the next day, God didn't do number rest. Amen. Amen. God said, I, I don't put this thing in order. I don't gave it to you. What you gonna do with it? Amen. But can I tell you that in the midst of everything that was going on, amen, in the midst of all the God goodness, amen, of this season, amen, oh, with the power of God, and the love of God, made manifest, amen, in the earth, man found the one limitation to the season that God had given him, see, can I tell you, the only limitation to the season of man in, the, in Genesis was not to eat of that one tree, smack down in the middle of the garden. All we had to do to maintain our season uh, was to remain obedient to the word of God. Uh, the fullness of the season of mankind, uh, it ended uh, with the disobedience of Adam and Eve. Uh, but don't get too sad that there is still hope. Uh, amen. And this is where uh, the concept, I believe, uh, stick with me now, uh, going through some teaching water. Uh, this is where the concept, I believe, uh, of spiritual seasons uh, came about uh, in the limited fashion uh, that now it is widely accepted. You may have heard of some church folk, and I ain't, I ain't casting shadows on nobody, throwing no shade on nobody, but, but you may have heard some church folk, even myself, maybe speak of waiting on their season. That specific time that they are waiting on where God will line up his favor in their lives at a certain time in their life, in their season, when it is only in a prescribed time where everything work out right in their favor, come together, amen, and work together for their good. They're waiting on a season, amen. See, in my spiritual mind, I have to begin to question, amen, that. See, I believe that there are blessings of God that are available to God's people all through the Bible. Amen. Old and New Testament. But after mankind being put out of the garden, everything that was made available, amen, it was made available on a limited basis. Amen. It was imperfect. Amen. Amen. It was imperfect. It was not It was not the fullness until the coming or the advent of Jesus. Let me show you. In the Old Testament, God's people experienced spiritual seasons of great anointing and power. Can I tell you, every now and then, Moses would experience a season. It's like we said now, a season sanctioned by God of great power. Amen. He would, he would experience a season of great anointing and the favor of God would manifest itself in his life through various miracles, signs, and wonders, such as the party of the Red Sea or getting water from the rock or by how about David, amen, as a shepherd born. He rose up and slew the giant Goliath. Do you think he did that for some hand-to-hand -hand combat that he learned out there in the desert with the sheep? No. He was able to do that uh, through the season uh, of power which God had anointed him with. Uh, but let me tell you, uh, when that season ran out, uh, if that giant had the back up, uh, David wouldn't have had nothing for him. Uh, because the spirit of God, the season of God's power, did not dwell inside of them uh, like it did with Adam and Eve, uh, but it rested upon them uh, for a specific time. Uh, so yes, in the, in the Old Testament, uh, you did have to wait uh, on your season. Amen. But I got something. But I believe that God got something better. You see, if everything became better with Jesus Christ, y'all know, y'all know everything that was, was always pointing to Jesus Christ. The sacrifices of the lambs, it became better when Jesus came because he became the one true and living sacrifice. Being able to worship, amen, it was good 
good in the Old Testament, but you had to go to Jerusalem. You had to go through the temple. But Jesus said that, that now that I have come, the day has come where you will no longer have to worship, amen, in the temple or the high places. But it will be in your heart. I'm just telling you, it will be everything that came with Jesus got better. Why then are we still waiting on a particular season? Amen. Amen. You got to understand. Amen. You you don't need to wait on a particular season. Amen. But look, if you have power and dominion and Eden, well, Jesus is come to bring your Eden back to you. Take me back. Take me back to where I belong. Take me back, back to the place where it is. Where it is your season. Amen. So you got to understand. Amen. And the season of God's grace and power uh, and anointing. Uh, we do not have to be, uh, it does not have to be a rare occurrence, uh, but it can be an everyday uh, experience. Uh, church, the reason I am proclaiming uh, to you today loud and strong, uh, change your season, uh, is because of this. Uh, in this season of man, uh, it was often an ordained uh, in the creation story. Uh, and everything that was lost in creation uh, was given back to us by Jesus. Uh, disobedience of Adam uh, caused us to lose out uh, and to have a disconnect uh, from the promises and the power and the season of God uh, in our life. Uh, but Romans 5, 18 and 19 says, Therefore, as by the offense of judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift come upon all men unto the justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, we were many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one, that one in Jesus, so shall men be made righteous. Jesus came to restore our season, to give it back, to reconnect us with the promises of God and the ability to command it to come to pass according to the sanction of God. Your season will give you the power, it will give you the right, and give you the ability to bind on earth and bind in heaven. It will give you the power to lose on earth and it shall be loose in heaven. It'll give you the power. You ain't got to wait on a thing. But all you gotta do is stand because he is your season. You gotta wait just because you crying. You ain't gotta wait no more. You gotta wait because you are heaven laden. You ain't gotta wait no more. You that believe that everything can't never look up. It won't never get right for you. Can I tell you right now? You ain't got to wait on a thing because Jesus has said, Tis your season. And I know you have heard your preach this day. Go a little bit. And I believe you believe me. That's what I'm saying. But I got one more for you. Because somebody might be saying to themselves, I don't know. I ain't never heard nobody else preach that. I ain't never heard nobody else preach that. Just like that. I ain't heard nothing about no season in the time to leave. I ain't never heard that. But let me fast forward over to John chapter 5. Because that was a man. Sitting by the pool. The pool. And he was waiting for a miracle. And it just so happened that uh, he was sitting waiting. He said he was waiting on a, a certain season. Uh, he didn't know uh, that the man that is the reason for the season uh, had come walking back that day. Uh, and the man that was the reason for the season uh, he said, man, uh, why are you here? Uh, the man said, I've been here uh, 30 and 8 long years uh, and I've been waiting on my season. Uh, see, uh, he was waiting on something to come uh, that he could not control. He was waiting on something to come that he did not really have faith enough to receive. Jesus was there. And Jesus said, you waiting on what? He said, I'm waiting on a certain season. Because 
at that certain season, uh, the angel of the Lord will come down, uh, and the angel will trouble the water. Uh, now, this is, is the thing. Uh, I told you seasons uh, before Jesus uh, had limitations. Uh, they were no less powerful, uh, but they were limited in what they could do and when they would do it. Uh, and so the man said, wait on the angel. But when the angel trouble the water, this is the limitation. You got to be first in the water. Uh, if you went first in the water, uh, then you can't enjoy your season. Uh, mm, uh, Jesus looked at him. Uh, Jesus knew that he answered uh, in the only way he could. Uh, see, that man had not heard what you just heard. Uh, that man didn't even see the word uh, that you just received. Uh, go like a folk out there today uh, that you need to go to uh, and let them know about this word uh, that if you believe in Jesus Christ uh, and you ask him to come into your heart, uh, if you're willing to live for him, uh, he's willing to die for you. Uh, and he got up uh, that you can have power, all power, even power over your own life. Uh, you ain't got to wait. Hallelujah. Jesus didn't even mess around no more. Huh? Jesus said, look, I tell you what, huh? since you're waiting on a season, how about this? Uh, get up and walk. Yeah. Rise up and walk. Yeah. Rise up and walk. Yeah. He's waiting on a certain season, but Jesus is the season. And Jesus gave him the power to get up. Huh? Amen. Yeah. Just ask him a question. Did he wait for the angel? No. Did he wait for the deacon? No. no. Did he wait for the preacher? No. no. Did he wait for the evangelist? No. no. Did he wait for the missionary? No. no. Did he wait? Uh, did, did he wait? Fall down and sat off and ashes and hope and beg and pray to God? No. Uh, you ain't got your bed for what's already going. Amen. You better get back to bed. You don't nothing down. Right. You ain't got your bed for what's already going. When I say to you, Tim, go see them. This means that it is go see them. If you're a child of God. Cry will be ready to say, 
God. Be encouraged today. Be encouraged today. Be encouraged no matter what you're going through. Put an end to it. If it ain't according to God's will, God's word, God's way, you got to go. Be an infirmity, be a help, be a sickness, be a wealth. Be a relationship, be a comfort, be hope, be joy, love. No matter what it is, if it ain't lined up like God said in your life, it's your secret to make it go. Come on, Father. Amen.